live in the dungeon. This is the Dream Warrior Review. I'm Kurt Thomas. I'm Nick Strawn. And this is episode 56. We just watched Gandhi. Uh, Did we? Is that what that was? <laughs> it felt like it. Oh my god! I felt like there should have been an intermission at some point. Oh god, that went on. Avengers: Infinity War. The Avengers and their allies must be willing to sacrifice all in an attempt to defeat the powerful Thanos. Thanos, yes. Before his blitz of devastation and ruin puts an end to the universe. That's a lot to say, and that was a lot to put in one movie. Yeah, it was. It, it was. But if you have every character from the Avengers and then your Guardians of the Galaxy mashed in there, you're going to have a lot to put in there. And every really, really bad optical effect, uh, optical CGI effect you've ever seen in your life. And the worst acting, acting performance Actually from the best from actor in the world. Absolutely everybody. But no, there was one in particular. One of my favorite actors didn't do so well in this one, I don't think. and Because he was trying to do this giant thing. You know what I'm talking oh. about? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Peter. <laughs> yeah, I feel bad. No, he's he's actually one of my favorite actors. Really? He's always good. He was Peter terrible. Dinklage. And he was I playing mean, a different kind of he was, he was he was trying to be flip or something like that. It reminded and me of uh the guy that played Batman. Ben Affleck? No, no, no. The guy oh, that really mean, did this. Christian Bale. Oh, Christian. Oh. That's my problem with that. his character, Batman, is that he, Christian Bale. He was trying to be I didn't too. like that voice. Yes. You know, that was. Uh, okay, speaking of opticals. Sorry, optical, I don't want. Yes, you had a ahead. thought there. I don't want to interrupt I, you. No, actually, I didn't. So, After this film, <laughs> I didn't. It's hard have to like, put it all. together because I had all these thoughts when we were leaving the theater and then everything kind of got jumbled and I know what I saw really for sure. But uh, so. There's all this action happening. There's this huge war. Right. There's exactly. Everybody's fighting each other. And then they have these really close-up shots, and I can't tell what the hell is going on. Well, it visually was moving so fast and in such a complicated way that there was no place to ground yourself and, and figure out what was actually happening. I mean, I... Like, well, like the wider shots, when they showed uh, Wakanda, there was a wide shot. You could right. see what was happening. Right, right. But they went from wide to close up to yeah. medium. But what, this, there were some scenes where it was all close up, and the camera was moving the whole right. time. Right, and 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 the, and I was, was getting dizzy. Yeah, I was getting dizzy too. I was uh, honestly, and, and I don't want to sound really old, <laughs> but maybe I'm too old for this. Maybe we both sound old too. You know, I don't know. Well, you know, you, it was um, it, it, as far as I'm concerned, yeah. And the Hulk didn't. Somebody wasn't in this one. <laughs> yeah, it never even showed up. You know, it's. <laughs> I, no, it was kind of a spoiler, but not really yeah, a bad right. one. Yeah, well, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, well, it, so you know what? I'll tell you. Here's the spoiler is if you sit through that whole movie, that's it. That's the spoiler. <laughs> uh, well, okay. Yeah. So let's let's address this issue here. Okay. Uh, 9.2 on IMDb? Yeah. Uh, that's not even possible, is it? That seems I, a little I, high. Okay. Yeah, am I old or was that just a terrible movie? Well, okay, I'm thinking. Actually, I like the first half. The reason why is because it reminded me of Floor a little bit because they were doing the right thing. They were putting humor, yeah, with action a little bit, and I enjoyed. I got kind of bored toward halfway through. It was kind of like, okay, well, now we're into this war. It was like clone. I, I kept thinking of Attack of the Clones when those, <laughs> those yeah, creatures oh, were coming. Yeah, I know. It, it, it was just a little much. Well, and, and you know, know the thing is, is much is exactly the problem with this. Uh, it 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 just kept accelerating. It kept getting bigger and bigger, and not necessarily better. Uh, just I, I, I don't know if I'd say it was bad, though. I mean, you don't, I don't think know. it was bad? I, I enjoyed it, but I wouldn't say I like Black Panther a lot more. Yeah, well, I even like Thor more. The last Thor. Oh, Thor! Thor was actually a pretty good film. Yeah, yeah. I mean, th this, this was, was down maybe here. that's the problem. Maybe they're trying to put too much into the film, and yeah. It, oh well, I think it's pretty obvious. But you know what? I have to say, there was something about this film that happens, you know, towards the very end that 
you have to say to yourself that maybe there was a reason that they did all that because this is going to seriously cut down on the old um, payroll when it ah. comes to the next uh, Marvel film. Maybe that's it. Maybe they they pissed off the wrong people. <laughs> well, well, you, you, you maybe they tried to start a union. Well, you, <laughs> <laughs> you know the thing is, is it's time for a little sloughing off of uh, of characters. There's because, a lot of them. Well, now you have Guardians of the Galaxy getting in there. Well, yeah, right, exactly. Which, but, by the way, did you see the last Guardians of the Galaxy, the Volume 2 one? Oh, I thought it was boring as hell. I didn't like it. Yeah. And I liked I, the first one. The, the first one was fantastic, you know? The second one was, um, yeah. So I want to know why, okay, why does the the character in Guardians of the Galaxy, the little raccoon guy, mm-hmm. I can't remember, I'm blanking on his name, so I'm saying I love the yeah, first movie, but I can't remember guy. his name. Yeah, little raccoon guy, okay. <laughs> but anyway, he, uh, the rabbit, yeah, the rabbit. Rabbit, the- <laughs> <laughs> well, that's right. The they rabbit. make him look so perfect, and then this this villain in this one, it, it didn't. It, I thought it looked he looked. How do I say this? I'm not a graphic designer, but when they showed him, there well, were parts where now, he was really in focus, is, and then they got lazy. It's like they it went out of focus a lot, like well it, towards the shoulders but, and stuff. But here's the thing: thing is, is uh, is there wasn't a lot of detail in his character, right? I mean, and and that's a problem. For uh, as far as going out of focus is is when the light turns a certain direction. So it just isn't enough. There was one there part where I saw the light on the good. wrong side of his face because everybody else had it on this side, right? And his light was on his. They, they highlighted the wrong side of his face. See, how could you tell that there was light coming was everywhere upset, from so. every? It was crazy. Per, every possible. Well, I'm talking about one of the slower scenes anger. where they were just talking to each other, basically. There are just so many angles, a light coming from everywhere, and and he was wearing a leather outfit, but somehow that didn't look shiny at all. In some points, I'm like, <laughs> well, you know what I have to say though is, is the raccoon. Did what, the, wait, what's his literally name? Literally, the raccoon... Find okay, is. find out what his name is. But the raccoon actually was doing some of the best acting in the whole freaking film. I mean, when he was having a discussion with... Uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. With him and the... It, it, I, I mean, on a one-to-one, you're talking with you know a character that isn't even there, and that character just smokes you as far as, uh, as charisma. Well, that's, you know... There, there's a... Um, you need to go see another movie. Rocket. Oh yeah, so the the guy Rocket, Rocket, Bradley Cooper. Mm-hmm. That's Bradley why he was Cooper. a better actor, I think, because Bradley Cooper is a but it wasn't pretty just darn his, good actor. But it wasn't just but his the voice. facial expressions. His facial expressions were better. Yeah, were, were better than anybody that he was ever paired with in the movie because everybody that he was paired with in the movie was sucking so. So he, bad. he takes away the award for best actor in this one. Y- you know who else I thought that w- was really really weak. It, the the leader of the uh, uh, Star Lord Star Lord, yeah. I mean, Chris you know, Pratt. Chris Pratt. I thought Chris Pratt looked like he was phoning it in from another galaxy. Well, <laughs> okay. So why is Captain America? I guess I was confused by why the fact he he wasn't he never had a shield. Uh, he never had his shield or his outfit. He just was out of place, and it, his hair is long. What, what yeah, was you know, I, I have no I idea. Know. I you know, I don't know. Uh, I. I, well, I guess the way the movie starts, kind of, they didn't have time to really, right, right, change but, his but, outfit. But <laughs> you have to remember that Mike. I have a theory here that this movie was, this was like Logan. Logan killed off a lot of the characters that were getting old. Okay, uh, in Logan, you killed off him. Yeah, you killed off Logan. You killed off. Captain Picard. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, the professor. The yeah. professor. Uh, you killed off a lot of the characters that that we're trying to slough off, right? See, I would have known if I saw Logan. I yeah, known that, if you'd but. seen it, you would know what they were trying to do here. <laughs> okay. what they well, were Don trying Cheadle to do. was looking pretty old with the gray right. hair. They Everybody was looking old. I think they could have dyed his hair or something. Really, and Chris Pratt looked out of shape. I yeah, mean, yeah. He looked heavy and jowly, and well, there's uh, some good dialogue along with that. Like, <laughs> I know they actually they actually kind of had to cover for him in there in a way. But yeah, uh, yeah, I did like the teenage Groot though. That was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, well, he he, <laughs> he just, was he was pretty good. <laughs> walked around playing his video games. And, yeah, exactly. And, and in in the end, uh, he became that thing. And, yeah, yeah. Well, but but making, so the end when all that stuff happens to those people, I mean. 
I'm, I'm I want to see the the follow up to this. Maybe the reason why is because it's it's going to cost them less money. Well, no. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Of course, it's all about money. I'm telling you that Logan. Right now, the one after Logan is the one that's coming out now is them as kids. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the origins. The, right, the origin. Yeah. No, but that's not the original. No, that's no. not the origin. That's the next generation. Right. So, of course. But it's an origin story because it's like right. starting from the beginning with a new fresh batch, basically, I guess. Right, and, and, and they don't have to Kind of like them. how they're going to reboot Nightmare on Elm Street pretty soon. And... Every, Halloween and everything, <laughs> and, probably, and everything. Yes, everything else. <laughs> I have a brilliant idea. If if anybody wants to listen to me for three minutes, oh, I have please, an awesome pitch. Please for a movie. don't start. Oh. It's a nursing home with Freddie, Jason, Michael Myers, and the Leatherface. Are we going to do this? Anyway, but I, I'll, if anybody wants to know, just you know, yeah, hit me up on don't. my whatever you Gmail do. or whatever. Don't don't listen to him. What do you rate this? I mean, I, I'm well, actually now that you put now. it that way, yeah. Well, okay. It, does this mean Disney is the death of cause <laughs> no <laughs> Marvel? <laughs> oh, oh! I did want to point out one scene that I don't know if they did it intentionally or if it was just just happened. Skeleton guy, yeah, he's wearing this big dark cape, and behind him there's these two big towers that remind me of a uh, certain a certain pair of towers. Yeah, yeah, and it, it just rubbed me the wrong way, I guess. Yeah, well, there, there but then you go. It, it was it preceded a lot of death in the movie, right? So I don't know. Maybe they did it on purpose. But so anyway, Disney. I know they're banking on all these these movies. So yes, but the, the, what they're trying to do is they're trying to carry the franchise without the incredible payrolls that this and this movie, as well as Logan, are are a couple of the movies that have been able to shear people who have done you know eight episodes of marvel movies are overpaid are you know are looking <laughs> right. jowly i mean yeah i think uh robert Downey jr has a little bit how much does he have left in him he's starting to look a little oh no ages there's acres of them were terrible i mean uh, just i i mean there was an awful lot that needs to go and i think that uh we might have just gotten rid of them and samuel l jackson just looks Always looks young. Well, yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so, it's the pay factor. Yeah, see, you're right. I'm not talking about yeah, I'm not talking about how they look because uh, Chris Pratt's amazingly funny. But the thing is, is you know, we don't need to pay. Chris well, like Pratt you said, anymore. the raccoon was one of the best actors, so right. I mean, they could so just why like, not draw stick him. with that? Yeah, why <laughs> basically, <laughs> exactly, and just right? have Bradley Cooper come in and record for a while. Right, and exactly. we're done. Yeah. So I feel like we should have a checklist. Like mm-hmm. we should talk about acting. Which we did. Right. Talked about effects, kind of. Do you have any more to say about effects? I have quite a bit to say about effects, yes. And then what about like story arcs, character arcs? uh, Well, (laughs) am I getting too involved here? There is, well, there is a. Because we have a new listener named Francis, and he he had some things to say about me with Black Panther. He didn't like my review, but. He didn't. I stand by it. Well, I stand by the fact that I think that Chadwick Boseman is an okay actor. Right. uh, (laughs) <laughs> the fact that I, the music <laughs> with the drums and stuff was a little bit much, and then yeah. there are a couple scenes that I didn't like the optics. That was really that's all I said bad about right. Black Panther, but right. I still gave it a four. Yeah, yeah, but <laughs> but I was also bugging you about the same stuff. Right, I was bugging you. So we have a new follower. I was ha- so happy oh, about it's that. It's good to have a follower, you know. But it's I weird, mean, you know. Yeah. I. <laughs> It's weird that people want to follow us. <laughs> why would they waste our time? Really? Why would they waste their time? Why would why would they waste our time wasting well, that's their what I time? Said our time. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, the the, the uh, I think that I'm going to give this one a two point wow. three. So I'm trying to I'm trying to remember the last Avengers movie and two I two point three. I like the last of it. We didn't do the last Avengers movie on this podcast, did we? I think that might have been before. Yeah, I you know the the thing is is the Avengers have been putting out just because we missed Avengers and crappy Spider-Man, films. Yeah, yeah. But the last Avengers I liked more than this one. Well, wait, the last Spider Man we didn't. Oh, do the last Spider Man was great, but it was we great. didn't do that one. We didn't do it. <laughs> yeah, what was up that's because that? we started. We we haven't even been doing this a year. Yeah, seems I know. Like it. It's really weird, isn't it? <laughs> it seems like ten years. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> seems like I've been in this dungeon forever. <laughs> I didn't like it. I mean, yeah. literally, I was sitting there in the middle of it thinking, guy, I'd rather be anywhere 
else. Well, I think absolutely I'm, anywhere else. I started feeling that way. See, I wanted like I to said, walk out. Maybe it was too long. And for me, it was very long. I watched the first half and I, I enjoyed it. But yep. then when the war started, <laughs> I started losing interest. <laughs> didn't, which didn't shouldn't it be the other way around? I couldn't <laughs> I couldn't believe when we came out that it was the same month. <laughs> well, you did ask me. Is this still April? It's still April. Yeah. But you know what I mean. It's like the first half was interesting and funny, and it had some action. And, and then the second half, when the war started, I, I just oh, yeah. didn't care anymore. Oh yeah, when the war started, oh man, it just kind of like wait. And, and, and those battles were yeah. long. I mean, they were. And here's there's another aspect to it. Is this is not only were the battles long, but there's there's a certain point to where. There's diminishing returns to as you bring in a bigger hammer and a bigger hammer and a bigger hammer. You know, eventually you don't care that the the that the hammers that you're using are planets. It just doesn't <laughs> seem to make a difference. Well, I was confused by the fact that he needed this axe that they were making, or hammer axe, whatever it was. Yeah. And in the last Thor movie, there was a big scene where you right, don't need lost, your you hammer. don't need your hammer. I, I know, I know. And and Peter Dinklage being fifteen feet high didn't didn't <laughs> I did didn't, love that actually. Didn't knock off a At couple first, of I was like, you. Oh, it's awesome. <laughs> Peter Dinklage is huge. <laughs> And he was walking around. There was like three feet people but, behind. But they him. didn't have. They, they had horrible lines for him to say, though. It was terrible. Yeah, and he played it kind of weird. Like, yeah, he played it. Yeah, that it was. Confusing. I mean, just the way he was standing and talking, like, yeah. Like, well, well, you need your hammer. You might die if you do, <laughs> if you hold the God, the was, thing open. Oh man, I don't know. It was like really hard. You know, it, it it's like it was like there was something going on that was just. Hideous in every scene. Every scene, e- either the fighting was too much, or the dialogue was too bad, or or Chris Pratt looked like he gained twenty pounds in his face, <laughs> like his head just had gotten huge. And uh, yeah, no, it's, but Don, Don Cheadle looked like he was the you know, eighty. You have a point though. Maybe the next one's gonna be good. Because well, I'm I'm saying that I I, start, I think that I they're I think that they used Logan, and by the way, by the way, if you haven't seen this, you should see Logan. It's a great film, but what it does do, and it got is a lower rating on IMDb. It, it kind of eliminates everything. It just kind of washes everything out. Now, now that we've talked about, but with comic books, you can go back and forth, back and forth. I mean, think about it. Superman died, right. And then they, you know, I mean, you could do anything you want with the comic book, and then all the characters suddenly come back later. Right. But, they could bring back younger but, versions of them. But, or, but I'm telling you that this is the way to get rid of, you know, uh, to bring in new characters and to bring in new blood. You know, to to kind of reboot the franchise. Shake it up so, a little bit. So, yeah, we've, uh, we, we've rebooted a lot. And um, I have to say this. Cue the music. Story time. Story time. With it's story time with Mick. Story time with Mick. Mick. It's story time with Mick. Story time with Mick. Story time with Mick. Story time with Mick. Okay. Um, that was like a chicken singing our music. It, it was. <laughs> <laughs> I have been uh, working on my book, A Nightmare uh, About an. Nightmare on Elm Street 4. And I've been talking to... For, it's amazing because I have talked to 40 people, probably, now that, that were associated with Nightmare on Elm Street 4. Um, there are some just interesting things that have just come out of them. If I look at the... If I do look at the metrics of things that these conversations had in common... Um, because it's it's a group of people of a, of a certain age, you know. Um, everybody that was working on Nightmare on Elm Street uh, four, it was a very young group. I mean, um, it was a young group of people of people that were really kind of really good and 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 had only been in the business a couple of years and and. Uh, a lot of them went on to do really some amazing stuff. Um, and the number of 
people that were working on that film that that stayed in the business for a good long time is is really pretty astounding. You know, I've 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 worked on films before where I was the only person that you know went beyond two more films. That's not the case here. But um, let me give you some of the interesting things that these people had in common. Um, one thing, at least. 10 to 15 of of the 40 now live in Atlanta. Wow. Because Atlanta is where the film business moved to. Uh, uh, which I thought that that, hmm. that in itself w- was pretty interesting. Uh, th- they are... Uh, there, there wasn't a as much of a centralization in L.A. as I thought that, as I thought that there would be. You know, uh, some of that would be like North Carolina or because there was a lot of stuff going on on TV in North Carolina. But. Yeah, but yeah, but all the stu- the studios, but have Tyler set up, Perry, the, I guess the studios of all. It's all because st- of Tyler Perry. <laughs> but no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I resent that. <laughs> and why isn't it Canada? I mean, Canada's uh, because it's Atlanta. I, I don't know. I'm not. I'm just. <laughs> Am I I'm just, a question? I'm just Sorry. pointing you out. You that know, is interesting, what, though. It, that you know, uh, there was a really, really strong group of them uh, in Atlanta. Um, mm. Some of them, you know, like me, kind of on the verge of uh, of retiring. Um, but there was also something that I found a little bit disturbing. There was there was. Uh, a lot of people didn't make the crossover to uh, uh, to uh, digital. Uh, some people did. Uh, Chris Chris Biggs was a makeup effects artist, uh, and he went in, he moved into uh, the digital stuff at about the year two thousand or something like that. And, and so he he's there at the beginning of that. And uh, but the thing that I noticed the most was a was this it was so much harder where people worked so much harder when we were starting out and hmm. and I, I thought that was interesting because I think every filmmaker of, of of every time period has certain has completely different uh, challenges uh, every ten years I also found uh, people wanting to to say that oh you know, Thing, things were better back then. You know, you got an awful lot of that too. Uh, th- things were better back then. Um, well, if things were better than back then, then why the hell were you working so hard? <laughs> <laughs> well, do you think it's technology has something to play with that? Like, uh, well, I I think that in a way, uh, I mean, we're limited with digit with a. With, uh, what am I trying to say? Analog compared to digital. Yes. Yeah. Well, there's no there's no doubt that uh, we had a much more limited uh, toolkit, and and the fact is that the best weapons that we had in our toolkit, the most imaginative, like for instance, opticals and miniatures and stuff like that, um, weren't the best looking. You know, uh, so you would tend to do uh smaller gags and and um you you do as much as you could mechanically as much as you could right in front of the camera you would do this so that you could limit that optical that 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 really threw it out big and you didn't have to look at it that long well Honestly. i think it's you were also had to be more creative and uh, I think you you tried more things, trial and error. This is nowadays it's like very well. This is this is what I get formulaic. From the, I guess is the, the word. I'm well, this for. is what I got from a lot of the people that were uh, that were doing uh, things now that were uh, are are uh, doing like the same things as they were then, but now they're doing them uh, you know more optically or they're on films that are doing, doing CGI and so forth. Um, the, the camera people love their toolkits. Right. I mean, you know, because I mean, let's face it, you know, the, the, the enormous crane that is a, that, that was a standard device that right. we used yes. was, it was the size of a, Mac truck, <laughs> right? And, yeah, and yeah. it was incredibly heavy, 
Well, so were the cameras. <laughs> well, yeah, well, but that's what I'm saying is, yeah. and it had to be heavy because it's lifting a 75 pound camera. You know, I mean, uh, and a person, <laughs> and it's lifting a person, and it, because because the person has to go along to see that you're actually getting the shot that you you want. You know, to point the camera in the right direction. Now you and, have drones and. and but it made it so that you only had like that opening shot and yeah. and the final shot were crane shots, right? Of course. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Everybody everybody knew knows that that like number Elm Street four, the crane shot at the end with right. the credits rolling over top. <laughs> exactly. Or or any almost anything that any film that you can think of had a crane shot at the end or a crane shot at the beginning. And and the thing is, there are so many technologies now that that can you can have a crane shot anywhere you want and they're all over films now you know i mean you, shooting overhead used to be the most incredible pain in the butt and now it's like probably one of the second easiest things to do i mean you know, <laughs> right yeah you can actually set you can actually set a drone to uh be five feet above you and two feet behind you on your right shoulder and it's gonna be there right but i can't believe is that they have drones you can you can program a drone like the super bowl when they use all those drones right 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 that blew my mind i was like they programmed <laughs> all these drones to fly in certain patterns and i'm like that is that's just freaking amazing you don't even have to have somebody like control it right right you just program it and you're done basically well it, it, yeah and the thing is, is is now they're getting to making smart programs for those drones so that it the drone creates its own parameters for what it's going to do wow. like 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 <laughs> they'll take they'll say you'll give them a job build this and, and you show the drone you know what you want to build and then you show them the bottle of uh, the uh, materials for it and you just stand back and let them go, and they will figure out how to do it. And yeah, yeah, scary stuff. But <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, I say camera people love their toolkits. The effects people, the effects people have a love hate relationship with these effects <laughs> because I, I I don't think they have yet found the the correct digital balance because digital effects, for the most part. They're, they're kind of a little too easy because now you have to think to yourself, what is the setup effect for a shot? Because um, if you look at something like um, like N Nightmare on Elm Street when uh, Alice, Alice is sucked into the theater, mm -hmm. okay? Just as an example, is to set that shot up, there are several small shots that are... Um, like the popcorn, close-up of the popcorn coming out of the container and dropping forward, uh, the Coke spilling and going directly down and forwards like that. And and that starts to tell you the story, but it's also the only thing that we could do. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. I mean, well, there was... simple, a, yeah. Yeah, so there's a, a certain order that we had to do these things in. Uh, so we would take all these simple gags and build them up to the the entire room tilting forward and the girl uh you know scrabbling on the seats as she falls forward to the edge and then the big reveal is is when she drops and we're actually now out in front of a building uh that we put the same beams on and she falls in front of those beams uh you know something like 60 feet Okay, and and we make that look like she's getting sucked into the theater because of where we were before. Yeah, you know, and and the thing is, is that sequence, the amount of thought that went into it, w w is not there anymore, and everything in the digital world is kind of equal. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. So, so, <laughs> so that's why so, I love it when they when you find a way to combine. The uh, practical with the digital, right? Well, because you like, get the realism, and like I say, you know, there are a couple of, of great examples of of, uh, of digital work that are that are just amazing, but they tend to be things that you can only do digitally, that have been that 
like there's a physical aspect to them that actually leads you up to them. I, I was thinking of Andy Circus, Zirkus, Circus, Zirkus. I think it's Circus, yeah. Circus. Andy Zirkus is uh, uh, in the last of the Planet of the Apes. Uh, amazing. I mean, just that, the the ape is just absolutely flawless, and and. Well, that's a good example because if you look at the beginning of the Planet of the Apes, where they were wearing the masks, oh, and, and they're terrible rubber suits. Yeah, yeah, and 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 you know we, the thing is, is the thing about the early Planet of the Apes is, is you had to go along with the gag. Right. I mean, in in order, I could never get myself to go into the gag oh, and say that that's <laughs> that's an ape. I I couldn't do it. I just I I really tried, but you know, to me, it was always a a, a, a mask. From Woolworths, <laughs> it's the same thing, you know. But but I'm saying like that and um, uh, Mad Max, yeah, perfect examples of, of, of like a good mixture of yeah. of optics and practical. And, and we have to be careful about that because back back when we had to mix our tools, it made for a better looking shot. And I think that nowadays, mm-hmm. and, and this Avengers movie, you know, this is this thing was just. Horrendous. I mean, the amount of effects. If you're throwing so much stuff so fast that you can't, that that literally it is it is making you where you cannot, your eyes can't focus on the screen to to see where it's going, and it's in and it's like loses its impact. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So so um, it just that was a long too. ways. Yeah, that was a long ways a, around yeah. to go to getting to the point that I'm saying <laughs> <laughs> that I'm saying that that it there was so much stuff in that that was coming at you so fast and so consistently that that between uh, that and Chris, Chris Pratt's fat face, um, it it was just really difficult to um, to sit there for uh, what was it three days. <laughs> right. <laughs> I almost wish they would take a movie like this and, like, at some point in the movie, just have everybody turn into a cartoon. <laughs> oh, they didn't. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm almost sure that that's what happened. <laughs> well, yeah. that's what the main character did in this. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he was he was pretty pretty cartoonish, and he stayed that way. Well, he was better than the. See, that's a weird thing. If I compare it to uh, Thor. I like Thor as a movie a lot better, but the villain in Thor was a lot cheesier, I thought. But then, yeah. he, then he started thinking about it like Flash Gordon. But 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 but, but, but wait a minute. <laughs> Cheesy isn't bad. No, no, you you're right. But the thing is, is by the time we see the villain in that, we've kind of like we're in on the gag. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I mean, because because it didn't take itself seriously, and and so we're in we're in for the laugh. That's why I was saying there was hope for this one when it when I started laughing at the beginning. Like, right, okay, right. Some but, jokes. but it didn't last very long. No, no, no. And then and then when it went all the way and, and got serious and um, yeah, yeah, no, no. I I I got to tell you, if you are looking for a good Marvel film, uh, the the most recent Spider Man, Logan, was excellent, and Thor was really pretty good. I mean, uh, actually, the Last Avengers was better than this one. I mean, I, no, in okay. my opinion, I don't know. Yeah, whatever. We'll see. Whatever. 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 We'll whatever. See. We'll see what Ned says. We haven't heard from him for a while. Hope he's yeah, okay. What's up with that? Oh, yeah. Ned. Ned. Uh, <laughs> so, is it time to kill this turkey? Yep. Okay. It's dead. Thank you for listening to the Dream Warrior Review. As always, you can reach us at Gmail at DreamWarriorReview at gmail.com, or you can find us on Twitter at DW Review, and of course, we're on Facebook. Until next time. Okay, so I have to record this. 
I have my own theory about this movie. As, as I'm sitting here editing the Avengers Infinity War, my theory, or my hypothesis, I should say, is there's going to be some time travel involved. Yes. Because think about Doctor Strange. Anyway, why would they kill off Black Panther? I mean, mixed theory maybe could work. But the thing is, why would they kill off some of these characters? I think there's going to be some time travel and Captain Marvel. I don't know that pager. I don't want to ruin anything, but there's a pager that looks a little old. Just saying. That's all I got to say. Anyway, just putting it out there. So Mick hasn't heard this yet, but I know he's going to be surprised when he hear this, hears this episode. But anyway, just putting it out there. Here it is in the universe. universe.